How's it going everyone? My name is Case and in this video we are taking a look at a brand new Harley Davidson Sportster Roadster. This is the more high performance version of the Sportster with cooler suspension and a couple extra little bits that make it that much better. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I want to say a huge thanks to High Country Harley Davidson here in Frederick, Colorado for giving me this bike to ride and bring you this video today. So if you're in town and you want to check out some cool Harley Davidsons, be sure to give them a visit. Let's start off by talking about what makes the Roadster version of the Sportster unique, and that primarily comes down to the suspension. The biggest item of which, if you look at the front, are these inverted forks. Most Sportsters only have standard non-inverted forks, so this is a much more aggressive suspension setup. You also get dual front brakes for a little bit of extra stopping power, and it doesn't stop there because there are adjustable rear shocks around back. My favorite design element on the Sportster Roadster is the finish on the engine and the intake. This is kind of a rough material, but it's hard, it's metal, and it feels very, very durable. This isn't the kind of thing that's gonna scuff easy and it won't look bad over time after you use this motorcycle a lot. The other cool aspect is there's a mixture of black surface and gray. So the intake here is gray. And then at the top of the heads, you can see like the sides of the engine, these are that same texture, but in black instead of gray. And moving down to the lower section of the head, you can see this is gray. And of course it has heat fins because this is an air-cooled engine but you still maintain some brighter, more polished and smooth metal aspects. So there's a lot of contrast going on here, which makes for an overall very unique looking engine. The Evolution engine in this Sportster has been around for a long, long time, but just because a lot of the technology and components on this bike have their roots in much older bikes, it doesn't mean there isn't any new technology at all. And a key point of that is this proximity key. So if you look over here right below the lock for the handlebars, you'll see that where there was a ignition in the past, there is no longer anything there. That's because this proximity key does all the work for you. Now you do have a physical blade style key, but this is only to lock the forks. To get the bike running, you just keep this in your pocket, move your hand over to the handlebar, hit the kill switch into its run position. And then you can start it right up. Now one of my favorite things about the Sportster is the feel of the transmission. It has this really solid clunk to it. And it's a bike that lets you bang right through the gears. It's transmission doesn't feel delicate and you don't have to worry about breaking anything that's for sure now the roads here are a little gravelly so I'm not gonna lean this bike all the way over but the Roadster suspension does give you extra clearance so that you can have a little bit of extra lean angle and it feels a lot more aggressive than your average Sportster suspension with non-inverted forks you can tell that this is a bit more of a performance setup than purely just for comfort. The 1200cc engine in this Sportster makes a claimed 76 pound-feet of torque, and although Harley-Davidson doesn't publish an official horsepower figure, according to published reports, these usually sit right around 67 horsepower. This is a heavy motorcycle. It weighs a total of 571 pounds with fuel in it and oil and everything. And although that's a lot of weight, 76 pound-feet of torque is plenty to move this bike down the road. It really doesn't feel slow. Now, these engines, because they've been around so long, we've gotten to see a little bit about how these act at really high mileage. And if this is a motorcycle you're planning to buy 
ride a bunch and keep for a very long time, you're gonna be in luck because generally the reliability on these things is outstanding. And I can speak from experience because I have an older Sportster myself and when I worked at a motorcycle shop, we had a couple of these come through with close to 100,000 miles and they were still running very well. How's it going everyone? This is Case from TFL Bike with our Ride Smarter Tip of the Month brought to you by Rider Justice. We all know riding two up is one of the great aspects of riding a motorcycle. But did you know that your insurance may not cover your passenger or that insurance coverage can differ if your passenger is married to you or not? Or that your passenger may not be covered if you cause the accident? Neither did I. That's why you want to make sure you carry a healthy amount of uninsured slash underinsured coverage as well as liability insurance. Shoot for at least $250,000 of uninsured coverage and more if you can afford it. On most premiums, that works out to a couple extra bucks a year and it's worth it to protect you and the ones you love. To learn more about how to ride smarter with common sense tips anyone can follow, Go to riderjustice.com, the champions of biker rights, on the road, in the courtroom, and now across the country. Stepping onto the Sportster, you have a nice, comfortable riding position. The bars aren't too far away. You have mid pegs, which are comfortable, and the seat is nice and plush with a little bit of support behind you. So when you get on the throttle hard, you're not going to slide back any. However, if you're planning to ride often with a rear seat passenger, they're not going to find it as comfortable as you will because this is a pretty small rear seat section and though the pegs are placed nicely for a rider, it's not the kind of spot that you would want a passenger to spend a lot of time on. As we flip the ignition on, you can hear the fuel pump light up and you see a very simple screen. This is nothing crazy. It's not a lot of the LED screens that you get on some bikes now, but you can cycle through a few different things. You have, of course, trip A, trip B. You have the time of day, your RPMs, and total miles on the bike. This one only has 29, so it is brand spanking new. Otherwise, you have a analog RPM gauge and of course a couple of idiot lights as they call it. So your basic functions. And although this is a very simple setup, it's really all you need. If what you're looking for is motorcycling boiled down to its purest form, there it is. A few of the features on this Sportster are optional, including ABS, which is an additional $795. As well, the proximity key is an additional $395. This motorcycle is obviously optioned with the proximity key. It also has ABS. However, this one is finished in black, which is the base color. So there's no additional charge for that. But if you want to get it in any different color, that is also an additional $350. And the base price of this motorcycle is $11,499. One of the best things about the Harley-Davidson Sportster really doesn't come down to the kind of specs that you can read on paper it comes down to how the bike actually feels to ride. And this big 1200cc V-twin engine has such a great rumble to it. And even the buttons have a good feel. The bike's fit and finish is great and it feels sturdy. Whether you're just starting out on motorcycles or you've been riding your entire life, the Harley-Davidson Sportster is a classic for a reason. They've been selling tons of these for years and years and they really are still today great bikes. Truly, the only major downside is that it's a fairly low-tech bike. A lot of other motorcycles have more sophisticated screens, more sophisticated rider aids, but if you're looking for pure, simple riding and nothing else, this can give you all of that. Anyways, that's all for this video. Be sure to go back to tflbike.com for more news, views, and real-world reviews, and we'll see you in the next one.